that a boy becomes a man when a man is needed. I've seen boys 40 years old because a man was never needed. And it's the same thing. A woman becomes a woman when a woman is needed. And there are women 40 and 50 years old because a woman was never needed. They would continually look for someone else. So we say the slogan of the totally responsible person is, if it's to be, it's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. We do not look to other people as the solutions for our problems. And what we do is, uh, Henry Ford said, never complain, never explain. In other words, if you're not happy with something, change it. But don't complain about it. Complaining is a sign of weakness, but it's also a sign of victimhood. A person who complains is saying, basically, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I have somebody who was talking to uh, the actor who plays Aaron in 24. I had lunch with him on Tuesday uh, with Nathaniel Brandon. He was saying, and he's become a speaker as well, he's saying you can always tell when people have their lives out of control when they talk about what things that are being done to them. He did this to me. She did that to me. They did this to me. The company did this to me. He said they're always saying, I'm a victim. I'm weak. I'm little. I'm ineffectual. I'm a child. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Please feel sorry for me. And what this does is that it guts your self-esteem. It just take, takes away all your motivation and all your self-confidence. So even the choice of words can be very bad. The reason that people don't succeed is because they have excuses. You cannot imagine a leader weeping, whining, crying, and making excuses. As, as Mark Twain said, there are a thousand excuses for failure, but never a good reason. So one of the things that we do is there's no more excuses. Either do it or don't do it. Get in or get out, but I don't make excuses. And acceptance of responsibility is not optional, it is mandatory. I mentioned this before, but I cannot be too emphatic, is that you can only give away control. You cannot give away responsibility. You remain responsible for yourself for your entire adult life. You can give away control by make, trying to make someone else responsible for your life, and you do and then you wait for them to tell you what to do or what not to do or to give you a raise or to promote you or demote you or hire you or something else, or you can accept responsibility. And accepting responsibility is mandatory. You cannot go any further. You are literally blocked in place, almost like there is a wall in front of you until you accept responsibility and make the leap and never make another excuse. So we say that the word responsibility can be broken down into two words, response and ability. It is your ability to respond. Well, in our life, every time we respond effectively to a challenge, we grow and become stronger. And we become more tenacious, and we become more confident, and we become more powerful. So the only thing that we can be sure of is challenges. Your life will be one series of challenges after another. They will never stop. They will come like the waves from the ocean, problem after problem after problem. The only question is, can we respond effectively? And if you do, you continue to grow. As soon as we stop responding effectively to the challenges of outside life, what happens is we begin to implode. So whenever you have a challenge, remember, uh, you just say, well, here we go again. This is what I do. I respond effectively to challenges. And the wonderful thing is, and I learned this in the metaphysics, make the decision that no matter what happens, you will respond effectively. And pre-program yourself so no matter what happens, I respond effectively. No matter what problem I have in life, I take charge of it, I accept responsibility, and I respond effectively. If you make that decision in advance, then when the problem occurs, it's almost like they push the automatic button, you're already set, and you respond effectively. You don't even have to think, what should I do in this situation? You just respond in an effective way. You don't get upset or angry or weep or cry or lash out at other people. What you do is you say, it's a problem, so we respond effectively. What do we do from here? Very, very important. This attitude is the attitude of the leader. So civilizations grow and decline to the degree to which they meet challenges and respond effectively, just as individuals grow or decline to the degree to which they meet challenges effectively. Negative imagination is, is thinking about things we don't want to happen that cause enormous, amount, enormous amounts of stress and distress. Um, in other words, we worry about things, we call it, we call it negative imaginations. We're imagining things that we don't even want to happen to happen. So we say, whoops, we say, um, so negative imagination, we say worry creates fear which can be described as fantasized experiences appearing real. Fantasized experiences appearing real, because here's, here's some of the discoveries that they've done with regard to worry. Worry is a sustained form of fear caused by indecision. It's a sustained form of fear caused by indecision. In other words, you're not in, you're not out. You do it, you don't do it. And so the only real cure for worry, as we'll come to, is um, 
Decisive action. Get busy. Take action. Move forward. You see, the mind can only hold one thing at a time, positive or negative. If you get so busy working on your situation, you don't have time to worry anymore. So, a study was done on the things that people worry about. 40% of the worries people had never happened. 30% of the things were in the past for which nothing could be done. 12% were needless worries about health. And 10% were petty worries about little things that I parked the car right, that I, you know, leave my stuff in the car, but that I bring everything from for the seminar. Uh, only 8% of the worries were about something substantial, and of those, 4% were out of their control. So basically what we find is that 96% of what you worry about is a waste of emotion. A businessman who never worried about anything, and they said, why don't you worry? He said, I do worry. He said, I worry for one hour every Saturday morning. And what I do during the week is when I think of something that I'm worried about, I write it on a piece of paper, and I put it into this box. And then I don't think about it till Saturday morning. At 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, I go and get out the box, and I just go through all the things I was supposed to worry about during the week. And uh, surprise, surprise, by Saturday morning, 80, 90 percent of them have disappeared. <laughs> so he says, I'm going to worry, just not now. I'm just going to worry. I'm going to have a worry time on Saturday morning. And as a result, he never ends up worrying. And you should do the same thing. Just take a little box or an envelope. Whenever you think of something you're worried about, write it on the envelope and say, I'll have worry time on that later. But you'll notice if you get really busy, you forget to worry. You can be busy all day long and you forget to worry all day long. You think, oh my God, it's five o'clock. I haven't worried about that all day. I've got to get some wood on the fire. I've got to get it burning again. I've got to think about it and get myself worked up. So to eliminate worry, live one day at a time. That's one of the great rules, live one day at a time. Get the facts uh, before you start worrying. Uh, there's a rule that says, just for today, I will remain calm. Just for today, I will not think about the things that make me upset. Just for today. And anybody can live one day at a time. In Dale Carnegie's famous book, How to Start, start Stop Worrying and Start Living, uh, the very first day, he talks about living in daytight compartments. The very first chapter, he says, key to not worrying is to live one day at a time and don't worry about things that may happen in the distant future. In the Bible it said sufficient unto the day are the cares thereof. So just be concerned about what's happening today which is under your control. The second is to get the facts. Many times we get upset or angry about something because or we worry about something because we don't have the facts. We have a half fact or we have a partial fact and so the first thing you do is ask what exactly has happened and you ask the question and how has this happened and what is the situation and what's going on and you find it is impossible to worry while you're asking questions and trying to get more information because of the law of substitution. So you focus on asking questions and you ask several people what has happened here until you have a very clear idea and very often you'll find there's nothing to worry about. Very often you'll find that what you thought you needed to be concerned about is really not a problem at all. In fact, you may have even had the wrong facts when you started worrying about it. Third thing you can do is use the worry buster technique. Now the worry buster technique is one of the greatest techniques ever discovered. It's a life changer. It changes people's thinking forever. It's certainly been very helpful to me. Is uh, you define the worry situation clearly in writing. The second thing that you do with the worry buster, and coming back to yourself as an individual, is determine the worst possible outcome of the situation. We call this the YPO, the WPO, worst possible outcome. What is the worst thing that can possibly happen as a result of this worry situation? And whatever it is, you say, well, it's something you can live with. It may even be the worst possible situation is that you'll die, all right? Now, if that's the worst possible thing that can happen, no matter what, well then what you do is you say, all right, well, if that happens, it happens. And so number three is you resolve to accept the worst should it occur. We run out of money by the end of the month, or I could die from an
this or the house will burn to the ground or something else. So you say, okay, if it does happen, then I will accept it. And it's interesting, resistance to a negative situation is the major cause of stress. Once you say, okay, if it happens, it happens. Anyway, so resolve to accept the worst. The interesting thing is it's like deflating a balloon is once you resolve to accept the worst, all the tension goes away. You don't have any tension and your mind clears and goes calm. Okay, the business goes broke, it won't kill me. If the house burns down, we get another house. If they lose all our money, we lose all our money. In other words, just accept it and then Number four, begin immediately to improve upon the worst. They teach this, by the way, in the universities. They call it the mini-max regret analysis. They say minimize the maximum possible regret. And so business people are taught when they make a decision is to say, what is the worst thing that can possibly happen here and how can we minimize the maximum? How can we minimize the very worst thing uh, that we do? So the worry buster is very powerful. Whenever you find yourself worried, say, wait a minute, what am I worried about? What's the worst possible outcome? What's the WPO here? And if you want to help other people, there's a wonderful observation. We say you become what you think about. You also become what you teach. And one of the fastest ways to internalize these ideas so that you think this way is to teach other people. When they have a con situation of concern, say exactly what it is, what is it that you are worried about? And then what's the worst that could possibly happen? And so if that were to happen, would it kill you? But the answer is no, so now what could you do to improve upon the worst? J. Paul Getty was famous for saying whenever he went into a business deal, the first thing he would do is say, what's the worst possible thing that, that could happen? He said, and then make darn sure it doesn't happen. And he would have his executives make darn sure that the worst possible thing doesn't happen. So begin immediately to improve upon the worst. And sometimes by simply facing it squarely, you can solve the worry situation quickly.